Swinburne University of Technology. Hi, welcome to this podcast on hand execution. So what we're going to have a look at in this podcast is first, well, what is hand execution? And then uses of hand execution. So why, why am I asking you to do this? And performing hand execution. So the process by which I want you to be able to perform hand execution as part of the unit. And it's important that you follow uh, the process that we've specified. So what is hand execution? When we're programming, we write code for the computer to execute. With hand execution, what we actually do is execute that code ourselves using paper and pencil. It's a fairly simple process, but it's really important to help us understand what the code we are writing does. So we, as I said, we write code mostly for the computer to execute. That's the purpose of our code. But what we want to do is really understand what that code does. What does that code tell the computer to do? When we understand how the different statements get the computer to do different things, you can then better understand your code and you'll be able to create code that will do whatever you want to do because you'll understand what each of the different actions gets the computer to do. So with hand execution, what we're doing is performing the actions that we have in our code one step after the other. Now, the great thing is computers are unintelligent. So hand execution isn't super tricky. It's doing what a computer does. A mechanical process do exactly what the code says to do. And so the one thing you have to really understand is what are the actions that the code means. So when I say x colon equals 10, what does that do? What does that mean? So we have to understand how the computer interprets those or how the compiler get, gets the computer to do those actions. What is it actually doing? Uh, you then perform the action one after the other. So each action you just perform in sequence the same as the computer would do. And the key here is to understand you know, what are these actions getting the computer to do? So when we write a certain piece of code, what does the computer actually do when it runs that piece of code? And that's, the, that's what we're really after here, that understanding. Now, when we go through hand execution, some of the things you might want to do as you're going through it, we don't, I mean, it is a mechanical process to execute the code, but then we can try to understand the code more deeply. Now, what was the purpose of this code? This code was written by a programmer. They had some purpose. They wrote it for some reason, hopefully. So they wrote the code for some, what, what does it do? Why are these set of instructions provided? What does this sequence mean? What does it do? And we can analyze the code that we're reading to try to work out how it achieves goals. So if I know what the task is, it's supposed to be doing this, but I don't understand how it's doing that, then when I read through the code and try to execute, work out what it's doing, uh, I'm analyzing that code in order to work out how it achieves the goals. So I know what the goal is, how do we actually achieve that with this piece of code? So in general, the uses for hand execution, uh, well, firstly, to help you understand what are we telling the computer to do? When I say this piece of code, what does it mean? What does it get the computer to do? It also gives us a way, or, or gives you a way, to demonstrate that you do understand what the computer does. Because part of the assessment for this unit is you need to demonstrate your understanding of these different actions that you're going to get the computer to do, the different statements in the programming languages. And so by hand executing something, you're able to show, I can read this code and I can tell you what the computer will do. Okay, So it's important with this hand execution process, you're trying to demonstrate the process, not just the final answer. All right, we don't want an answer out of this. This is a process demonstration. Okay. Another thing that we can do with hand execution is locate errors. Sometimes, quite frequently, I think, uh, the code that we write has small mistakes in it, obviously unintentional. Uh, and we write it thinking that it's going to do what we want it to do. But when we run it, the computer doesn't do what we want. It's very frustrating. But what we need to do then is look at our code. The computer's done exactly what we told it to do. Yeah, so the problem, it's our problem. We made a mistake. We need to think about, well, 
what does the code actually do? And so hand executing gives you a way of going through the code and saying, well, what this is, I know I wanted it to do this, but it's doing something else. Why is it doing that something else? And you can look at your code and work out where your errors are. Okay, so now let's get to the, the process of hand execution. Okay, so here what we have is some code. And that code is the code to draw a house. And it's taken some parameters. We've got some local variables here. And we've got some actions. And what we want to do is work out what these actions is do. What happens when we execute this code uh, on the computer? Now, down the bottom here, I have my call. So we're going to execute the call to draw house, which takes parameters or takes values 50, 75, 100, and 200. So what happens when this code is executed for that procedure call? So over here, what I could do is, let's just write down that procedure call so we don't forget. So it's, it's draw house. Sorry about my writing. Uh, 50, 75, 100, 200. Okay, so that's our that's our procedure call. <laughs> okay, you have to bear with my drawing. So what we want to do now is execute this code. So this call has happened, and the computer is now going to execute this procedure. Now, if we look at that, oh, that's a lot of code. How are we going to understand all of that? Well, remember, the computer doesn't do that. It's not looking at all of this and trying to work out some greater meaning for what draw house means. It's just going to execute this. So let's... Let me just hide away all the stuff we don't want to see. Okay, when we're doing this, just focus one line at a time, okay? And sometimes less than a line. So, but at the moment, one line at a time. So here's our one line, draw house x, y width height. That is the piece of code that we're starting here. This is going to execute this draw house procedure. And we have these parameters here. Now, parameters are variables. So. This piece of paper here, or this drawing here, you should do this on a piece of paper with a pencil. Yeah, no need to make it fancier than it needs to be. What, what we can do is this can represent memory. And inside this memory, we can allocate data for our variables. So x, y, width, and height become variables. So I can declare a variable x, and it's allocated a piece of memory, which I'll, I'll draw a box to represent that piece of memory. So here is X's memory, that bit there. Whenever I refer to X, I mean whatever is written in that box. We can do the same with Y and with width and height. There we go. Excellent. So when we execute this, the first thing that's going to happen is the computer needs to allocate space for all of the parameters. So each of these parameters becomes a variable inside which we can store a value. And these values here, the 50, 75, 100, 200, are assigned to these variables when this procedure starts. So the value of x will be 50. The value of y will be 75. The value of width will be 100. The value of height will be 200. OK, so there's our parameters. Let's switch back to our code. So we've finished executing that line of code. Let's move down. All right. Oh, we can look at these ones all together. The next thing that we have in our code is var. So this is a variable declaration section. And in here, we have a number of different kinds of variables. So we can have roof height, and we create a variable for that. There it is. We need wall width. We create space for that. We're going to have wall x. Wall y. Uh, 
uh, right side, maybe up here. And middle. Okay, so this has, when, when this code executes, the computer allocates space for a number of different variables. Now at this point, what we'll do is leave these variables empty because we don't know what their value is. If you ask me what is the, the roof height, well, I don't know, it's something, but we haven't yet given it a value. There will be a value here in the computer, but it's some, we can consider it to be a random value because we haven't given it a value. It's just whatever happened to be in memory the last time this bit of memory was used, okay? So it's important that you assign a value to your variables before you use them. All right, so let's, let's move on. What's next? Now oh, we have our begin. All right, we're getting a bit, let's, we do just want to focus on one line of code. So you can also forget all of that. There we go. Look at that. Just one line of code. Begin. All right, that just means start. So let's, yeah, we can start. There's the next one. All right. So what we have now is a statement. What does this statement do? So this is the round, uh, an assignment statement, and we know that because of this colon equals symbol here. So an assignment statement does two things. So it gets the computer to do two things. The first thing the computer does is evaluate the expression on the right-hand side. So that's this expression here. And whatever the result of that expression is, is assigned into this variable, the roof height in this case. All right, so let's evaluate the expression. My expression is round, open brackets, 0 0.33 multiplied by height, close bracket. Okay, what does that mean? Well, round is a function. And this function takes a, a floating point value, like a single or a double value, and it returns a whole number, an integer. Okay, so, and it's gonna round that off. So 9.9 .9 would round to 10, whereas 6.2 would round down. So it would round to six. So it rounds up above 0.5, et cetera. All right, so what's my calculation do? 0.33 multiplied by height. Well, what is height? So we can, we don't need to remember that. We just look over here and it tells us height is 200. So 0.33 times 200 will be 66. And it'll be 66.0 uh, because it's a, this is a, a single, a floating point value. Uh, but what we'll do is round that. So it will become 66. And so the value here is 66. And that is assigned to roof height. So roof height is assigned the value 66. Okay. That's that statement done. We can move down to the next statement. All right, so the next statement, similar thing. 0.8 multiplied by width is going to go, is going to be rounded and assigned to the wall width. So remember, it's an assignment statement. So first thing, evaluate the right-hand side. To call the round function, I need to work out its parameter value. So this value here has to be calculated first. That will then be passed into the round function. It will round it off for us. And the result that we'll get will be the integer value. So 0.8 times width will be 80, 80.0 80 in this case. And that 80.0 will be rounded to 80 and we can assign 80 to the wall width. So wall width over here becomes 80. All right, that's that one done. And notice this is all we do with hand execution. Uh, usually you don't have these boxes to help you, but just focus on one line at a time. Assignment statement, height minus roof height. All right, so what's height? Well, height is 200. What is roof height? Roof height is 66. So what is 200 minus 66? 
all right, and we assign that. So 200 minus 66 is 134. 134 we are going to put into wall height. Did I miss that one when I wrote it down? I did, didn't I? Okay, that's okay. We can, we can adjust. I, in my rush to get through this, I forgot to create the wall height variable. So let's, let's just add that in quickly. Nobody will know. Wall height. And 134. Okay, so there's our wall height. And we can continue on to execute this We can continue to execute each of the assignment statements one after the other until we get to the end. So that's the hand execution complete and what we can work out from this is the shape of the house. So each of the different variables represents different values related to that house. So if we go through that, we can work out that the house shape should be something like this, based on the different values, the, the wall X being the offset from the edge of the triangle for the wall, uh, the width and the height of the rectangle being the wall width and the wall height, and then we have the, the roof height as well. Okay, so that's the process of hand execution. I hope you enjoyed it and or found it useful, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. This has been a Spindoin production.